We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Hi, Chantel. Hey, Roxanne. Chantel is not home. She's in Florida right now. What a surprise. You really are never home. <laughs> this is actually for work, though, you guys. I'm at a Marriott conference, so um, it's like the owner's conference. I'm not an owner, but um, I've been with my company for like eight years now, so like I'm like an owner's rep. So it should be fun the next three days. I'm going to be like in, I, oh my God, you know what, Rexy, when I walked in today, the way that everything was set up, I'm like, oh my God, this is like BravoCon. And it's just so funny. Like oh. the way that they had all these booths and like the, like the little like agenda. And I'm like, there's like, you know, room number one, room number two. And like, I'm like, oh my God, this is like BravoCon. I'm about to deal with. How's the weather over there? Oh my God, you guys today, like how do people live in Florida? Like you guys, pe- people who live in Florida, like you guys have the best, like, you know, time from like. November to, to like maybe April, but today was 101 degrees. Like I was wow. dying and it was humid. Oh my gosh. And I'm going in a few weeks. Oh, and you're going to, you are going to die. And I'm bringing Al. So <gasps> you need I to know. make sure you have fans on fans. On I know. Packs. Like it's actually not okay for, for like the weather. Really hot. The weather has been terrible here, by the way. I mean, you oh, actually, you just, I just left, left today. today. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> I know. Oops. I thought you were gone for longer. Uh, but well, I'm glad that you were able to still watch today. Um, New Jersey. Yeah. New Jersey you know, day. it was like the biggest bus kill of, you know, Sunday life. Like, you know, you know, especially because Sundays are such a, like, you know, we get the scaries and stuff. So the yeah. fact that like, you know, I have to sit there and like go through the show on a Sunday when yeah. I'd rather be like prepping for the week. Like, it's like, why are you guys doing this to me? I know. But I will say, watch what happens live literally resurrected us all from the dead and like made us like feel like why we love this show sometimes, you know? Yeah. Um, this is my first time like really watching the show live. I was actually able to do it. I, m- me and my husband made sure all the kids were sleeping. And so I was a- able to actually like really watch it live. So it's like the first Sunday that I was able to. Yeah, so how'd you feel? You know, um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but let's get into the episode, shall we? Yeah. Okay. Um, by the way, I don't know if you noticed this, you probably didn't, but in the beginning of the episode, they show Louis like um like throwing the ball, throwing the ball, and he like missed the shot in the basketball thing, and I thought that was funny. Oh <laughs> sure that's so hurt his ego a little bit right so i know i am watching so you've already watched this but i finally watched the beckham documentary on netflix and it was so good so good yeah i really liked it so if you guys are looking to watch something and i know that you told me to watch it but and they acknowledged his affair and everything and i was like wow this is actually really good so yeah that's that's just my side now so anywho uh so during this episode in the beginning, we see that Melissa and Joe FaceTime Antonia while she's in college. And Antonia wants nothing to do with her parents. And you can just tell she has, like, that attitude where she's like, ugh, the whole time. But I feel like it's super normal for kids. I do feel like it's a lot more normal when you're, like, uh, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So Antonia's, like, a little bit older at this point. She's probably, like, 19. So I, I feel like maybe you get off, get off out of that phase at 19. But she's, like, still really very much in that phase. Yeah, like, I just feel like, I mean, like, I'm, like, set now still. So it's, like, I don't take any offense to what she's doing to her parents. Yeah. Okay. But, like, I mean, your parents aren't like that with you. So, I mean, it's, it's like, such different parenting parents. I mean, yeah, I just think, like, as teens, that is a normal thing but I guess maybe because we see how Teresa's kids are with her and it's so like opposite I mean actually Gia gets annoyed of Teresa sometimes too yeah. so <laughs> yeah where she'll roll her eyes and be like come on mom so yeah I, I guess it's just like a normal thing and they just so badly want you know her to show them a little bit of love yeah especially Melissa Melissa's dying without her yeah because she's like I'm at home with all the boys I, this is crazy but I swear you guys I've always said this we always say this on Patreon too is I really feel like Melissa 
one thing that she was jealous about with Teresa is the fact that Teresa had four girls because she loves being a girl mom and she loved having sisters. So she was always envious to know that Teresa kept having girls while, you know, because like Melissa always like makes it a point to say she's Antonia's, you know, mom or like she has a daughter. She doesn't really talk about her sons unless she says I'm stuck at home with them and I'm yeah. stuck at home with all boys. Uh huh. So... Melissa talks about the brunch and brings up how Danielle is starting to see Teresa and Jennifer in a different light and how Danielle called them out asking if she was set up. And Melissa's saying this to Joe and Joe's basically like, obviously it was a setup. And I can't believe we're still talking about this. I know. And like, even when like, they're actually like, even the whole time when they kept like, you mean, you know, like, I know this, oh, this is classic, you know, housewives. Like you talk about, you know, event they happen with someone else. You can get a different recap. Yeah. yeah. You get a different perspective, but it was just so boring. And I'm like, I don't even want to listen to this. Like, this is not even fun to listen to. And they did it multiple times right. in this episode. There are some stories about my dad's life that I never get tired of hearing. From hilarious to heartfelt, tear jerking to plot twisting, his retelling of events always brings me joy. Just in time for Father's Day, I found the perfect gift that captures all the stories for my family forever. It's called StoryWorth. StoryWorth helps you preserve precious memories and stories from your dad for years to come. Here's how it works. Each week, StoryWorth emails your loved one a thought-provoking question that you get to help pick. Some questions we've seen include, what's the bravest thing you've ever done, and how did you meet mom? StoryWorth makes the writing process a breeze. All your loved one needs to do is respond in the email with a story. Long or short, it doesn't matter. You'll be emailed a copy of your loved one's response as they're submitted over the course of the year. You'll get to enjoy the retelling of stories you already know or be surprised by stories you've never heard before. After that year of fun, StoryWorth compiles your loved one's stories and photos into a beautiful keepsake hardcover book that you'll be able to share and revisit for generations to come. With a copy that I ordered for my home, we can read my dad's stories and pass them down to our children and grandchildren. Families love StoryWorth. That's why it has more than 25,000 five-star reviews on Trustpilot with millions of stories preserved since they were founded over 10 years ago. Give all the dads in your life a unique, heartfelt gift you'll all cherish for years. StoryWorth. Right now, save $10 on your first purchase when you go to StoryWorth.com slash allabout. That's StoryWorth.com slash allabout to save $10 on your first purchase. And, like, it's, like, everyone was really there. So, like, there's really nothing to recap. It's not like you're going to your husband and, like, you had problems with somebody. It's, like, you're really going and recapping, like, other people's dramas. It's just weird. Yeah. Jackie heads over to Teresa's house and Jackie seems very happy where she's at with Teresa. How do you feel about it? I, I keep saying like if I was both of them, I just wouldn't trust each other like fully. But like, you know, I'm here for it. Like, I, I feel like if they want to, you know, start a new friendship and, you know, be like, you know, how they are. I think it's cool. Yeah. And like, I mean, you know, I think like Jackie shouldn't just go in and like, you know, start talking so much shit about, you know, all these people. But if, you know, if they start doing that to her and she's hearing it and she's going to be like, you know what, then I'm going to, I'm going to do it too then. Right. When Melissa tells Joe how Jackie was trying to vibe with Jen and Teresa, Chanel, I wish you went back, like you could go back or anyone just go back and pay attention to Joe's face. He's like, what? But it comes across all rehearsed. That's a problem yes. with New Jersey. Uh -huh. They constantly are rehearsing what they'll talk about. For example, Melissa's like, this is what I'm going to say to you. This is how you should respond. But then like, they're not actors. So you could tell that it's rehearsed. And it's like weird. It was just like so awkward the way he even said it too. You noticed that where he's like, yes. what? And I'm like, what? it's like he was like he was like on drugs. Like what? Like it was just uh -huh. so weird. <laughs> it was so weird. What's so funny is Melissa said she's not going to answer any questions about Teresa or that she doesn't want to speak on her. Yet we watch a whole scene of Melissa talking about Teresa. And did Teresa mention Melissa once during her scene? Nope, because that's how unbothered Teresa is. But Melissa's talking about Teresa when there wasn't even. It's not like she, like you just said she wasn't ever arguing with. Teresa, it's not like they had a debate or something, but she's still talking about Teresa. Yep. The whole time. Yeah. The biggest ick for me happens at Bravo Lover 1234's house when she FaceTimes Margaret and she's about to tell her about the brunch. And then you see Thirsty Fuda side right conveniently into the conversation, making sure he's part of it. Oh my gosh. No, like, like he I literally like sits next to him, Rachel. Roxanne. I really cannot. I really cannot. Like you guys, like if like, you know, if I didn't like this guy, you know, before this, like I really don't like this guy like this. He is disgusting. He is not, he's not okay. He is not okay to have on 
the Real Housewives show when he's literally no. a husband. And I'm so, no. and I know Jersey husbands are included a little bit more, but this is on another level. He's worse than Princess Gorga times a hundred, which oh, says yeah. everything. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. At least sometimes Princess Gorga can be funny. Like we'll give him right. and like he can be mm-hmm. likable. We've always said that, you know. People do like him, and you know he can be funny, and like the yeah. fans gravitate towards him. But this is just like. Ew. Exactly. No, totally ew. 100%. I know. I'm not, you guys. I swear I'm not just saying that to be like, whatever. But like, I really am truly disgusted. I swear. It's so gross. It's so ugly. There, I don't even know how else to explain it, but I'm embarrassed watching him. I really am. I don't am. know how her, her, his wife is not. I don't know. I, know. I don't get it. I don't Low know. Key, I would go home and be like, uh, babe, like, relax. This is yes. embarrassing. And this isn't going to look good. How is no one saying anything to him, I think, is what I'm shocked by. I guarantee, even though Joe Gorga is friends with him right now, out of you know, it's like convenient for him to be like, you know, because they've they've made it a thing where it's so divided, so it's convenient to have him. I'm sure even Joe is low key like, okay, this is too much. Mm-hmm. Imagine if Louie did this stuff. Imagine. Just wait, just wait till we get to the end. I know. What's interesting is Rachel Fuda keeps saying what her husband did was um, was something that he did when he was 17 years old, which is a lie. I don't know why these people lie when they know the fans will find out what age he really was, which he was in his early 20s, and it wasn't just for marijuana. So I don't know why they lie. I know. And they say it with such conviction and such oh truth. And gosh. it's like, you guys, uh, like, you can say mm-hmm. till you're blue in the face. This is what's really reality, and this is what's really real. real. The best part is Margaret Justice has the balls to say, isn't Louis unemployed and mooching off Teresa? Oh. Knowing that's a lie. But the irony of it all is that the one husband that's really mooching off his wife is Joe Bonino. I mean, her husband who has been unemployed since they got on the show. Like he's an unemployed plumber. I'm confused. No, I know. Oh my God. I literally said that in our chat, in our live chat that we were talking about. I'm like, okay, says the pl- the plumbers, um, like We've wife, never like... seen him work. We've never ever There's seen him work. There's nothing wrong with plumbers, but like, you, it's like, he's definitely not really working at all well he's unemployed yeah. so that's the problem he's unemployed and he's living off his wife so how dare she say that louis is when you and literally are with someone like that what got me off was on this was that like you know he's like i want an apology for saying that i'm a parking attendant but then it's like then he's like there's nothing wrong with parking attendants so then it's like why do you need an apology if you don't think oh there's anything God. wrong with his comment? ego dude yes. i can't it's I know. so bad so over at Dolores, so she brings up Polly getting divorced, and he says, do you think if the divorce is finalized that I'm going to then propose right away to you? And Dolores says, but why are you waiting? And she's familiar with this behavior because she acknowledges she went through this with David. It sounds like Polly is figuring out how he and his wife will separate assets because it's been so long. But Polly don't play, though, because Dolores oh. is... Oh my God, he's scare scare sometimes. Yeah, no, no, this his toot on um, his toot in this conversation was very like off putting. I don't know. I, look, Dolores is trying to do that reverse psychology bullshit thing where she's like, "Listen, like I might not be here then," and he's like, "All right, then bet leave. If that's the case, and you're gonna rethink things, then leave now. I like you're not gonna like fucking reverse psychology, you know? Yeah, to but." Me. I think, like, Dolores needs to learn to, like, really say what she's feeling and saying what she wants, you know, in the beginning of a relationship, in the middle of the relationship, and every moment she can get, because it's, like, it literally does not, it's, like, all of a sudden, like, they don't, they don't know what she wants, and then now she's, like, I'm gonna get married, and this happened again, and, like, she's, like, picking the wrong guys, and not saying Polly's the wrong I guy. Think, I think Polly knows what she wants. I think, at, especially at that age, like, you typically do want to get married, you're not, like, messing around, you're not talking to, like, a bunch of people, so I think Polly knows it. But he's just in a sticky situation and he's not going to get her to like reverse psychology. If you want to leave, then there's a door like that's he he's just that type of guy you could tell. Yeah. Which like I'm sure she knew who he was from the beginning. Like she picks it, it is what it is, you know. Yeah. It just seems like she dances around like questions with like with her her guys all the time. I do think it's like a good point. You know, just because he gets divorced doesn't mean he's going to go and propose like right then and there. But then isn't he getting a divorce to do that? Like, so like, I, why, why wouldn't he? Like, I don't Well, no. I think she's saying like, I don't want to continue this type of relationship. If like, you're still married, it's, it's, it does put her in a very uncomfortable, weird situation. Yeah. Am I the only one who skips Danielle Cabral scenes? Oh my God. I wanted to, but I was live. I, oh, see. Okay. Well, I like, <laughs> have, well, cause I paused to write notes. So then oh. I got to like forward the scenes. So yeah, no, I wanted I to. Know. I don't know what happened there, but so but, Margaret. Oh yeah, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, we'll, no, we'll go ahead. This, no, no, we'll get to the scene about New York okay. Fashion Week. 
Margaret Josephs is hosting a charity event for a great cause regarding first responders, but knowing half of the cast isn't coming makes me less interested. And that is why I hate so much that the cast is divided because we're literally watching two different shows. Oh yeah. hundred percent. It's and like so it's like bad. half of the show is like not even fun to watch. Like this whole the no, whole thing. I it was agree. like even if they had like cute little moments, sometimes it was not even fun. It's just like I and that's just my you know just my perspective. Yeah. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night, ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end, what will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Jen Ada meets with Fessy Messi, and they talk about how she's moving forward with Melissa, and she's positive about it, unlike how Melissa was last weekend, on last week's episode where she was talking shit. But Melissa is having a housewarming party. She tells the girls she invited Jennifer Aiden and Messy Fessy asks how Teresa is feeling about Jennifer moving forward with Melissa. And Jennifer says she's going to do what she has to do. Teresa does tell Jennifer it doesn't bother her. And it's funny because Melissa, she constantly says that or implies that Jennifer has had issues with her because of Teresa. But I swear, every time they've ever gotten into a, an argument or a fight, it had nothing to do with Teresa. Oh, for sure. And like, I like in this scene, though, I really like the questions that Jen was asking. Jen Fessler was asking. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. just really interesting. She, yeah. even though she like plays the both sides for sure, you know, like, yeah, she, she really is good. Like, she's very entertaining to watch. Right. Messy Fessy um, says that Margaret is struggling with her getting close to Teresa. And she knows that Margaret will not be happy about it. But it's like, I can't, again, I can't with the divide. The season is so hard to watch. It really, really is. And these are just people that it's like they've been on a show not only for like one season. So it's like, why are you guys not allowing them to have yeah hang out who they want to hang I out know. with and let it, let it be organic? Exactly. Jen Aiden then tells Fessler about the brunch and how Danielle was mad that Lena came to her dog party and how Danielle was like, who is Lena to be in the VIP? And Messy Fessy is grossed out by Danielle's behavior, as we all are. I really don't think there's one person who would agree with how Danielle handled Lena's situation, especially acting like she's above her. When If you were above her, then you would pay her. Like, why are, why would she do your hair for free? But this is where what pisses me off about John Fessler is that like she's saying this to you know John Aiden, but then like if yeah. she had a conversation with Danielle, she would say Danielle like yeah who is she like you know well, what do who do yeah who does it matter I to you, that. you know? she just I does those things all the time so it's like what yeah. is, what really is your opinion I know that's true. Dolores tells the ladies how they can't harp on things and then mention Paul's Polly's divorce. And she tells Margaret, Fuda, and Melissa that Paul uh, about Polly's comment about, you know, do you think I'm gonna propose to you the second that I finalize my divorce? And he obviously implied he basically wouldn't do that. And Margaret is like, why not? I got married a week mm-hmm. after I was divorced. Margaret proudly admitting to that is so ick. Like you cheated like on your 10 husband. Days, I think. She, oh, days. I think she said one week. Yeah. You oh, cheated I don't know, on- but like it's crazy. You cheated on your husband with this dude. You show no grace by marrying the man immediately after you divorce. You just have no class. It's not something to like be proud about and say, I did it. Uh, Okay. Have fun with your plumber, plumber husband that you cheated on, you know, or, you know, cheated with, um, Polly says he's thinking about going into, so he's talking to the guys and he says, I'm thinking about going into business with Dolores. And I don't think that's a good idea unless you're married. Wait, no, but no, seriously, though, like, like, I swear, we give credit when credit is due, and Joe Gorga and his confessional literally yeah. had me rolling. What did he say? Did you write it down exactly? Well, he just basically said, he's like, Dolores is not that type of girl who wants a man to do business with. She wants to sit di- sit back while the well, man you does do business. The business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I, like, like, it, not a good idea. He's just like, I've known Dolores for a long time, okay? Like, it, yeah. I was cracking up because, like, seriously, like, why can't she just get a man that wants to take care of her? Not I that know. you can't do business with people. I think that's fun and it's creative, but it's like, maybe she'll pop in and give her ideas. But, like, it's like almost sounded like it's like he needs her to do the business. It was right, definitely finalize me. that divorce, get married first, and then talk about a business. But they should not be getting into anything before getting married that is like i don't know a little bit of a red flag huh? yeah. i don't know i don't know i hope she yeah. do it um so i did kind of watch danielle cabral's fashion show but it was a yawn i really wonder what producers were thinking when filming this i'm honestly surprised they even aired it 
Oh wow, I know. So in our in our live chat, everyone kept saying that like it's she it it was like during New York Fashion Week, but it's like on the outskirts. Like it's not like main events. It's like literally like a random, you know, like place and event. Like it was just like not what she was making it out to be at all. So I saw the clothes before her fashion show and of the kids, and I thought it was hers. And I was like, I kind of like these. Like I kind of like these styles, but then I realized it wasn't her style. And yeah. I was like, oh okay, that's why. But then the one, it was funny because the one that, um, you know, she, like I think someone was wearing and they came out most, it's like, I like that. It's the same one that Teresa loved and she called basic. So it's just, yeah. it is funny how like they have the same style sometimes. Yeah. Teresa and Louie, they're going to meet with Fuda Lips and Bravo Lover, even though Bravo Lover said she has nothing left to say to Teresa. And Teresa says she wants to keep her peace, basically not let these people disturb it. And the way this came about was Louis is he's being the bigger man. He has Polly to coordinate something so they can just end things and just move forward. But if Food Lips and Bravo Lover really want nothing to do with them, then I sh- I don't think they should have met up with them. Yeah, and like, or why are you even on the show? It's like yeah, this is exactly. Like, you're already like fed up. You're not sitting next mm-hmm. to her. You're not talking to her. It's like why are you even on the show? Yeah. But it is funny how like both their conversations because they kept going back and forth you know and like the way that like Teresa and Louis were like way more positive in my opinion about like going into it and yeah. talking and then the way that they were in it's like I just can't it's like it just shows it just to me shows you who's the problem well the again another ick part with food lip Chantel he's like the only way I'll be able to move forward is if Teresa makes a public apology not even a, a, an apology he wants a public apology no one even knows who you are food lips like the Seriously, first who- is so real Literally, like, who do you think you are? Oh, my God. It's so embarrassing. Like, that's all you care about is what the public thinks. It is so weird. Again, Foodalips had emailed me at 2 in the morning to, like, remove stories that we wrote about him. And every time he responded, it was 2 a.m. He really cares how he is perceived. But it's like, if you really cared, you would change your whole fucking personality at this point. Oh, for sure. Foodalib says Louis is a narcissist and says that Teresa calling Foodalib a drug dealer is probably because Louis is a drug dealer. And I'm like, oh my God. What what name are you guys going to call him? Know. Like, what name? Like, let's go down the whole list. I swear. To get it out of the way. And did these people forget they were the first ones to come for Louis? I, I don't understand. Yeah, they do. They do. And Foodalib is going into this thinking it's going to go sideways. And I, for that, like, he he's like, I know it's going to go sideways. And it's like, be a man. You're not a man. I, I just, I can't stand him. It's so hard watching this. No, I know. They go to the restaurant first and Rachel and John order two shots of tequila. The fact that they need liquid courage to act tough is so cringe. Oh, they were so scared. I swear, like, the oh way that everyone, like, they were breathing and, like, talking. And, like, we, Rachel was, like, moving her it's so weird calling her Rachel, but like the way I she's know. moving her lips and like, I, I just, or like licking her lips. I'm like, are you guys okay? I mean, they've rehearsed this a hundred times. They just oh, needed some liquid sure. words to execute. Teresa um, and Louie come in and Teresa says, thanks for meeting us. John is like, you guys need to start the conversation. You would think this man is literally 15 years old. He was so well, no, he like, No, first of all, this is, he, he goes, how should we start? And then like, Louis goes, okay, you guys can go first. And he's like, no, I think you guys should go first. Then don't yeah. freaking ask. Right. Exactly. Before they start talking, Teresa says that she brought a housewarming gift for her brother for the Fudas to give to them since they'll be attending. I personally would have never done that. Uh, it, but she I explained, mean, she explained yeah. in um, Watch What Happens Live that um, that was all Louis doing, and like Louis wanted to do that because that's the type of person he is. But I agree, if like I would I never have done, done that, that. Yeah. no. And you could say, well, she says she's like, I didn't want to do it, but my husband insisted, and that's the type of man he is, and it, it is what it is. And then Fuda says, Fuda Lips says at the restaurant, he's like, that's one of the reasons I'm sitting down with you is because I respect your brother. It's like, no, you're sitting down with her because you guys are filming a damn reality TV show. Okay. And that, that doesn't even make sense to me because if you respect Joey, Joe and Trace are not even talking. So Joe, he doesn't even care. He doesn't even care about his relationship with his yeah. sister. So like, what respect are you even showing him? So true. Yeah. Like that's, what? That's he wants point. you to be, he wants you to be cool with his sister and be nice to his sister when he's not being nice to his sister. And his no. It makes no sense. He's happy. He's so happy that you have problems with her Seriously, and her husband. Like, there's no so, respect there. Like they yeah. don't have a relationship. So true. Teresa says she felt a connection with Fuda initially, and she even apologizes to Fuda if he thought she was saying that she's a drug, that he's currently a drug dealer. And I'm shocked Fuda Lips hasn't gotten smacked because the way he speaks to women pisses me off. He talks down to her like he, and then he like he's like he makes her like elaborate everything. He's like what verbiage? I don't know how to explain it, but the yeah, way he and I think it's rude. Me out. 
because it's like you know sometimes I, we're like that we you know the way we talk sometimes it's not the most eloquent and you know yeah. I can say things wrong and I spell things wrong all the time so if like someone came at me just to, like knowing that like maybe I'm not the like I'm not a perfectionist and how I talk it would re- it would really it would I would punch him I really would punch him I don't even think it was about her being a perfectionist like he was just talking down to her he was just so disrespectful and he was just talking down to her he was like degrade he was degrading her yeah and because I think problem. because they they try to they try to come after her her like um knowledge like all yeah. the time and it's rude <laughs> Teresa apologizes multiple times and Fuda Lips refuses to accept it. And then he starts shitting on his child's mother. And Teresa's like, I don't want you to speak ill of Jaden's mom. Like, don't even go there. And Bravo Lover1234, aka Rachel Fuda, she's like, I'm Jaden's mom. Bitch, hold me back. It's so- like, yeah, you could you could take that title, but at the end of the day, he has a birth mom. Exactly. And the way she the way they come across is the problem. I still don't understand how they saw how much backlash they had last season, especially Rachel. And she came in even more hot this season. Oh, yeah. I, I don't understand it. I mean, they try their best to block every bad comment, any negative thing said about them on social media, but it's like, you can't block how you guys come across. Like you guys look like assholes. hundred percent. Teresa couldn't even speak without Fuda interrupting her. And I was like disappointed. Talking. I was disappointed that Louis didn't say more, but at the same time, I'm nope. also happy. Mm-hmm. I know because the viewers would just sort of like eat, eat, eat him nope. alive. But like he sat very silent though. Like he could have said a couple things. No, I don't, I don't think he could have. I don't think he should have. I am so glad Louie just stayed silent because guess who looked like the asshole? Fuda Lips. If Louie even said one thing, they would have taken away the fact that Fuda Lips came across looking like an asshole, came across degrading and just like focus on the one thing Louie said. So I'm glad that he sat back and let him burn on his own. And I love that. Uh, so, um, I do think Teresa can hold her own too. Yeah, so. exactly. And I think I, he knows that too. So it's like, if yeah. he felt like she couldn't, maybe he would have stepped in. No, I don't know how the F, by the way, Teresa didn't get up and smack him. The oh, way I know. he was talking to her, I just don't know. He then tells Teresa she owes him an apology after she literally apologized multiple times. And then he says, it's not authentic. Someone hold me back at yeah, this point. Seriously. It's like, it's like, oh, I, you owe me an apology. She's like, I'm apologizing to you. And then like, he's still looking for a problem. Bravo needs to fire food ellipse at this point because how, it, how are they allowing this? And no one wants to watch this. I don't think even someone who's a fan of Melissa and Joe would ever be like, I'm with how John acted here. I know. She calls John, John Fugazi. He calls her the poster child for mortgage fraud. And again, I wrote, I love that Louis let Thirsty Fuda show himself, show his true colors. He stayed out of it. If Louis said one thing, the Louis haters would come for him and say Louis was a problem somehow. So I love how this all went down. He called her a has-been. What did he say when he was walking down the stairs? I forgot what he said then too he said he's he just kept talking shit basically yeah i know and like it just like the way he was like let's get out let's get up let's get up it's like are you oh yeah, he's okay? like come on and he he like puts he points his finger he's like come on did let's you go. drive did like, you oh drive your two shots are you a uh, um yeah you call on you now? <laughs> oh, oh gosh <laughs> i don't know it was just very very just so uncomfortable because it's like he's waiting for his moment he really thinks he's in the mob to be quite honest it's really yeah, like concerning. it was it was really like a lot. Like I really was like so. I'm not even. I don't even want to talk about him anymore because I how much like, I just have discussed it with him. It's like you sh- you shouldn't even like get us to even talk about you because like that's what he wants. Yeah, I really. I mean, I feel like typically when we're talking about these episodes, Chantal, we talk so much longer, but really nothing happened in this episode. It's so boring. No, it's everyone. Not it's not just us saying that. Everyone that we talk to, like our community that we're, you know, we're in all the time with you guys, like you guys oh are God, not liking it. Someone oh. declared this like the worst season more than season six. I agree. Yeah. I feel like I've even said that. What did we think about Watch What Happens Live? Oh, no, I was obsessed. She, no, yeah, she, I thought she did she great. Really killed it. I mean, um, her outfit was a little funny over there, but um, she looked great and she killed it. Like she really, really, really killed it. Like I don't know what she, she just like came on fire. She didn't even want to acknowledge Melissa's presence, by the way. So anytime you oh, yeah. brought it up, she gave it like no mind, no time, nothing. Yeah. And then another thing that she announced, you guys, is that she's, you know, starting her own podcast and it's called, is it Turning the Tables? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a great name. And yeah, so I'm so happy for her. and doing that. So, and I think that's great. I think this is going to be such a better fit for her. So I'm so happy that she's doing that. 
what oh she she shit on john fuda though because at one point she says uh you know because he asked about the reunion and she's like listen everything i had to say was on the show so i really don't care if there was a reunion she's like but the one thing i was gonna do was i was gonna bring an envelope and i was actually gonna pull out receipts unlike john fuda's thirsty ass came on the show with his envelope that he never even opened or allowed anyone to see yeah oh yeah for sure and i think that her co whoever was next to her on watch happens live like he you could tell like he was way more neutral you know but i love that he said that it's not fair that they keep bringing up or they're getting mad at Teresa for bringing up stuff in her um and john Fuda's past but they always they're constantly bringing up Teresa going yeah. to jail so it's like you guys are such hypocrites of course mm-hmm. yeah i agree uh they also asked if Teresa reached out to dina um regarding her case and she said yeah i did and that dina hard at it and then she said you know justice was served obviously her and dina aren't as close anymore and you could uh, tell she was uncomfortable to to answer that and i think it's also just because like you well, know dina like, dina like is also like she don't like let that shit yes yeah she's, she's like don't talk about scary. me on the show yeah mm-hmm. like so it's like you get really you really do get so scared i would get so scared of dina yeah yeah so um speaking of dina she you know obviously um her ex has been convicted and he faces a lot of time and someone had commented on her post and said, quote, let me tell you about my family. We are as thick as thieves. That did not age well. And Dina says it did not. And then someone asked, has your sister apologized? I hope so. And Dina said, nope. Oh my gosh. It's really bad between her and Caroline. Yeah. I mean, I think like, even though I feel like maybe when time has settled, like there does need to be some sort of acknowledgement to Dina yeah from the manzos there just has to be i know it's it's and really... like what you're gonna go to the day where they um what's it when they give him the time what is that day called the the sentencing yeah the sentencing it's like what yeah. are you guys gonna be there like still oh my gosh it? Like, i hope not that would be I so know. bad i don't think they would do that because that's a time you can like say your your piece to the yeah the person I don't know, you guys. This episode was a yawn. It was a yawn. People are saying that we should watch Real Houses of Dubai. I am going to watch it. So um, we are going to give me Give me like a week to catch up on season two. Can you give me that? There's only two episodes. No, season two, not season three. You mean three. season one? They're on season two. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. then I've watched this. Yeah, they're on season two, so. Okay, yeah, then, okay, we can definitely talk about it. Yeah. I thought this was season three. Wow, they took a long time then to get to season two. It took one year. That's what I hate. Yeah. I hate that Bravo does that. Okay. And, like, look at with Orange County. Orange County, to me, this is, I, I they're, it's premiering in July. That is the fastest they ever did, because they started filming at the end of April. Like, filming wrapped up end of April. And look how it's coming out in July. Yeah. I'm excited for Orange County. I feel like we're all going to be, like, really into it for sure yeah but i think that's all that we have i mean chantel's in florida um yeah and uh, we hope you're having fun i mean we'll do another episode probably while you're in florida yeah i will no i want to do i want to do an episode i'm calling the next episode i want us to do an episode on thursday or friday because we're going to talk about the summer house reunions oh yeah oh yeah we should totally enough is enough that. i but know guys skipping this for me i love it though i i, I know we need to talk them. about it i know you're right we'll do that like, that's so. like the one show i'm like i want to talk about i'm like oh my god let's like like when i call you i want to call you just to like talk about what we just watched so we'll record thursday evening okay all right well we love you guys thank you so much for listening we hope you guys have a great week and um be sure to support us on patreon and follow us on instagram at all about trh and all about trh podcast yes bye guys bye Seeking the truth never gets old. Introducing June's Journey, the free-to-play mobile game that will immerse you in a thrilling murder mystery. Join June Parker as she uncovers hidden objects and clues to solve her sister's death in a beautifully illustrated world set in the roaring 20s. With new chapters added every week, the excitement never ends. Download June's Journey now on your Android or iOS device or play on PC through Facebook games.